Hi, my name is Taufik Okoya, CEO of Fico Solutions Limited, the creators of Queens of Africa Dolls. The focus of the Queens of Africa Dolls um, includes, but not limited, to the uh, Millennium Goals 2 and 3. Our concept is such that um, once you're able to create that sort of sense of value, um, you know, in an individual, uh, they become more confident, more, um, you know, they believe more in themselves, they're more driven, and, um, you know, so with that, we thought, you know, this would lead to a better impact or growth, even in terms of the economy. For the greater part of it, we more or less want a situation where the African child, especially the girl child, um, has that confidence, that uh, drive and appreciation of herself. I'm not saying that, you know, Western values are bad or should not be embraced, but there should be a healthy mix. So we are more of, um, it's a broad spectrum, and I believe that this has an impact beyond just, you know, the uh, trade, the sales, the uh, impact on the economy, but on the individual. I see myself more as a social entrepreneur, um, simply for the fact that um, my definition of success when I started my company is not so much about how much money um, I, we make as a company per se, but how many lives we're able to reach and touch and impact positively. Um, so with most of my work, I always want it to have some kind of you know, benefit or impact beyond or besides the financial gains of it. My strong belief is that uh, for the project to be successful and achieve the impact that we want it to, it has to be able to sustain itself. Um, as much as we're looking at making that, you know, social cultural change or, you know, create that awareness of the importance of um, having toys in your own likeness or that would, at the end of the day, improve you know, self-esteem. It sounds a bit far-fetched, but we cannot undermine the, um, the, the fact that, you know, what children are exposed to in terms of play tools impacts them psychologically in the long run. Um, there's, there, where there are so many subliminal messages that, you know, you know we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, abroad, you find out that when a child has been traumatized and you have children psychologists, the way they get to begin to understand the mind of the child is either by giving them a pen and, a, and some crayons to create like paintings and drawings and really from there they can tell if the child is from a dysfunctional family or not. The same way they can give them dolls to role play with and you know you can be there observing your children as they role play with dolls and you can begin to see you know the impact of the things that they've subliminally you know taken on board so um we you know look to see that you know the doll culture especially maybe in nigeria it hasn't was not so high uh, because i think dolls were seen as an elitist sort of toy and you know the the you know low income earner or children of low income earners uh, you know probably didn't have it was more like a luxury for them and the kind of dolls they got to play with were not of that sort of quality but for us to create that um, you know that doll culture amongst even the you know low income earners children the dolls had to be affordable um, that said you know there's still the fact that um, you know, it's a business that needs to run itself. Uh, how we strike the balance is um, in a situation maybe where we should we could be making like 100% and doing lower, lower volumes, we'll rather you know do like a less percentage in terms of profit and do higher volumes because the higher the volume, the more the people the message is getting into and the more people you are impacting. So it has that um, you know uh, ripple effect. Um, so for us. Um, it is, it is, it will uh, continue to be a social, uh, cultural sort of business. 
because of the fact that we were not too sure about the volumes we're going to be doing being a new market um, and I was very conscious about the price point we decided to I'd made the molds designed the dolls but had the parts made in China and then we brought in the parts in the in pieces and we assembled them here we clothed them here we get the hair braided and styled here locally um, so the foreign part are the actual molded plastic itself and then the local part uh, when we now do the finishing and making of the clothes and so on um, that was the way we could actually keep the price down although in future um, if we have now established you know distribution you know uh, ne solid distribution network we plan to actually have our machineries here and produce 100 percent locally um, we get like the, we do have our peak uh, months we have our uh, not so good months um, our permanent staff we have 15 permanent staff and uh, but when we do have large orders um, that figure could go up to as much as high as 50 uh, because we usually get swamped and so but what we now do also is that the months that we keep like basic production and then when we need to actually now uh, give it a jump we bring in like some you know temporary staff casual staff uh, to finish the you know processing and package The interesting thing with the project so far is the fact that um, we, uh, we started about uh, six years ago. Uh, when we first started, it was slow and we did not get that much of our acceptance you know, from the children, from the market. Um, so I'd taken a break from marketing to actually, you know, and back on like an educational sort of campaign, you know, talking about the benefits and importance of having black dolls. And um, we did that for another two or three years. Now, what has happened is since last year, there's been a great, there's been, an, we've, we've gained acceptance and there was a greater jump in terms of our demands. Um, even that was even locally, which we now started working on how to begin to cater for the local market and in the past uh, few months we've had even a greater blow up in terms of demand from you know international markets um, our plan initially was to now start planning for export um, towards the later part of this year but our plan seems to have be have been fast tracked um, so we have had to um, you know, double up on our production, and we're working on how to how to increase, uh, have a more effective production output. Um, at present, uh, we do roughly between 100 and 150 units of the dolls a day. Um, our sales have uh, it fluctuates. Um, January uh, till date has not been so great because, uh, but usually we find out that the festive seasons actually, you know, creates a great jump um, in our in demands of our products, and I think that's simply because of uh, people having parties, giving out gifts, and so on. Um, so around uh, during our. our really good months we do because we have two ranges we have the queens of africa range we have the niger princesses range queens of africa is more like the premium brand while niger princesses caters more for the mass market um so we end up doing sometimes greater volumes in the niger princesses which can range between you know three to four thousand during the good months and the queens of africa also amount about the same uh quantity um, so we are looking at having to um, increase our production because if we're now looking at not just Nigerian market, the African market and the international market, um, those quantities that we're doing in terms of production daily will definitely not suffice. So we have to, we're working on it now to now, you know, increase our, our, our you know, production out, outputs daily. We do have um, plans for growth and expansion, not just uh, in Nigeria, Africa, but the world, you know, um, 
in the world you know, as a whole. Already, we the the, the project is tagged Queens of Africa. Um, we started with the Nigerian dolls, I mean with the Nigerian series, and even in Nigeria we do have more than three you know, tribes, but what we've done is just focus on the three major tribes initially. Um, we are working on actually having a you know, Queens of Africa doll created of you know, the main et ethnic tribe or group in the different African countries. Then also we're looking at getting expansion into the markets, the international market, because we know that we, there are quite a number of Africans in diaspora and um, that are looking and longing to have some kind of connection back with home. Um, so we actually do have like books, we have music, we're working on animation series, um, different avenues or different portals more like it of communication to reach, you know, the uh, to rich Africans across you know all of, uh, across the you know world, um, so yes, we do have a, a great expansion plan that would cover you know the different areas that we find would be of interest to you know any any child. The famous name, uh, I won't say directly, um, you know framed or changed my philosophy or influenced it per se but what did is the fact that um, I did work you know um, in the family business um, Eleganza Industries um, and um, I started off at a very young age um, I worked in the various departments from sales, marketing, production, I handled admin human resources, I uh, did research and development and um, I, I operated as, the, uh, ex as an executive director in about three of our various companies um, for a period of just over 10 years. Um, during that, you know, my working in the family business, I was exposed to a lot of business insights uh, from, you know, different parts of the world, I had to travel, you know, and we dealt in mass production. And it's almost the same sort of philosophy or, you know, idea behind the Queens of Africa too, where we took luxurious or so-called luxurious product items, made them locally, and made them affordable, so they became more like you know, household uh, products. Um, and we're talking about things like the coolers, the biros. Uh, we had flasks, we did fans, and you know these things were these products were products that were imported into Nigeria majorly. And you know because of maybe the size or the volume or the cost of uh, the product itself, uh, it turned out to be quite expensive. So. Um, that also gave me a great understanding of the Nigerian market because we had, you know, distributors and, you know, and end users from all over Nigeria, you know, so um, it was a good experience, good exposure and in a, you know, direct way, uh, my uh, exposure on the Eleganza, you know, industry actually, um, you know, had a great influence in terms of, you know, my uh, business thinking.